Hello everybody, it's Chuck Thunder and welcome back. We're back with another episode of UWO and we're going to take some time to explain shipbuilding. Um, I've done shipbuilding in the past in other videos, but I have yet to do one in which where I'd really detail everything on how to start the process and like get to the middle to end game purposes of why you would do shipbuilding. Uh, a lot of people want to do shipbuilding because they want to make a lot of money or they want to make themselves the perfect ship without having to pay somebody else to do it, which that's a fine and noble thing to do. And that's what I'm kind of doing with my own character. So um, I'm not doing this to try to be somebody else's shipbuilder, doing it for my own sake to learn how to play the game. So hopefully this video is those for those people who are somewhere in between. They're not necessarily uh, going to be the best shipbuilders in the world. I'm not here to teach you how to do that. That's not optimization level work that I'm into. I'm into getting you started, showing you what you could be doing, how to do the basics, and understand like the UI and the purpose of why you're doing what you're doing. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first part I want to break shipbuilding down to is going to be about getting the prerequisites, what you need to do in order to become a shipbuilder. In sh the shipbuilding tree, there are some things you need to make sure you have before you begin. So first being first, you need to at least be zero adventure, zero, zero trade, and seven battle. That's pretty standard and pretty easy to get a hold of. So they should have no problem there. Second is you need to have repair skill of rank three, unless you're in a job in which that you have shipbuilding already as a favorite skill but for the most part in every instance especially if you're starting early you need repair rank three i've done a video on how to grind um repair um to get you to that level three one of the best things you could do is pretty much just crash your boat as many times as possible and keep on repairing with the repair button until you've reached rank three or get in battles just grind it however you feel appropriate second uh or I should say third requirement you need is to learn from a certain place right because now that you've got rank three now you need to go someplace to get it so you got to make sure you can get access to either tunis istanbul or calicut remember there is disguises necessary to get into these areas if you are looking to get in you can't just go in normal uh clothing except for if you're in your school outfit you can go in in tunis istanbul and calicut and speak to the um gm there and pick it up so once you have the shipbuilding skill you've now reached like the bare minimum necessary to get started having the skill. Um, what I do recommend that you do do to do, do is that you get a job in which that favors or expert levels the shipbuilding skill so that it lowers the amount of uh, skill points you need in order to rank it. Um, and most of this is going to be shortened significantly if you have this. So the favored um, jobs are arms dealer, tactician, and guardian. Uh, the only one uh, that is special to all of this is the shipwright one, which has it as an expert skill. Not only is it going to reduce the uh, requirement to level the most, it's also going to give you a plus one to your shipbuilding skill. So that's the reason why I saved that one for last, because it is the best one to have. Now, each job um, is a different type. The only one that's a trade job is the arms dealer. Whereas the shipwright, tactician, and guardian are all battle jobs. So if you want to be in a battle job, these are the jobs for you. If you want to stay in a trade job, get the arms dealer job. Um, but that expert skill is hard to pass up on. So getting shipwright is probably your best bet. But it is also the hardest, or one of the harder ones to get. Um, arms dealer, we'll start with that. So it's a trade job with it favored. You do need to have 0 adventure, 28 trade, and 16 battle levels. With a total level of 50 battle levels. Um, in total to be able to get there. Um, then you have to get a certain quest in Marseille called Da Vinci's Research in order which you need to do the uh, quest in order to unlock it. Um, there are some requirements to getting the pull the quest. Um, so make sure that you look at the quest and look at what it's going to ask you to, that you need to have um, in order to complete it. Um, I don't have that at my fingertips here, but it will have a requirement and that requirement is going to be um, something that might hold you back from getting the job, so make sure you have those requirements to not only pull the job, but also to complete the job to get the uh, card to become an arms dealer. Tactician and Guardian uh, can be got 
in two different ways. But the way that you get, we'll start with a Guardian because the Guardian is going to be separate. It's also another battle job. You have to be 0, 10, and 41 in this battle levels for a total level of 80 battle or 80 levels. And uh, you get it by doing a quest called Life Saving Corpse in Seville. So again, make sure, just like before, the right quest uh, is pulled in Seville uh, by the uh, battle master or battle uh, quest giver uh, there. Again, make sure you have the research, or not the research, make sure you have the skills in order to complete and pull the job. So, tech, Tactician and Chef Wright are got in a special way. Um, you can get them by using a Strategy and Tactics Certificate, uh, which is a particular certificate given to you by NPC characters um, that allow you to take one of these two jobs when you hand them in at a um, Guildmaster. Uh, so, the way that I did it to get mine is I went to so well first things first you need to find those lifesavers on the map those lifesavers on the map if you do what you have to do to save those ships or help those ships out you will get a letter of like endorsement and with that letter of endorsement you um, can then use them in another way to get this uh, tactician card or this this card called strategy and tactics certificate once you get one of those letters, after saving those people who are looking for your help at sea, you go to the uh, Caribbean area, uh, just south of that. There you should be in the Caribbean region, just on the eastern coast of the South American coast there. There'll be um, a few people to look out for, and those people that you look out for are going to get you the... Uh, ability to use the endorsement that you got um, and when you click them and use it and then be careful when you use the endorsement or use the letter you choose the correct option that's going to result in getting you this certificate um, and then when you choose the option to get the certificate you will uh, be able to transition into the next job later so make sure that you have the letter with you you choose the correct option when you use the letter when you find these men sailing and um, when you find them they will gift you with the tacticians card for you to change your job in one of the major cities or whoever guildmaster you need their list exact names I don't have offhand but I will put them up on the screen once I find them right here those gentlemen you will find in the uh, Caribbean one of which you can find closer to I think it's Pernambuco uh, when you're in Pernambuco, you will be able to um, find him a little more easily, and that's what I did. When I found him, I used the letter, got my card, and traded it in at my guildmaster to get the shipwright job. Okay, you haven't even begun building a ship yet, but you've gotten the basics down. You could skip everything that I've set up to this point, except for the fact of getting shipbuilding. You don't have to do the job thing, you'll just extend your time that you have to build ships in order to rank up but it is the most optimal way here to get one of those jobs to get the ranking faster so now you have to move on to actual ship building so the first part of the guy is going to talk about basic ship building basic ship building would be going to the uh, shipwright at the uh, shipyard in any area that has a shipyard that you have access to and choosing to custom build a ship and choosing one of the pre-built listed ships there on the side, ranging from Barca all the way up to Viso or a galley, whichever region you're in, for you to build. Once you select it, then you say, get a couple of options to choose on how to build it. Um, and so on this page, you're going to get options to build a ship of like what to do with it. There's going to be a range in which that you're going to have to choose to put the cargo in and by doing so you are going to adjust the sails and adjust the uh, rudders and uh, the turning radius and the speed and all these other things and so I generally recommend that when you're using this option here to stay within the recommended range that they give you that would not result in penalties you have a maximum range I'm in a max but there's one range listed that's going to give you the range in which that is appropriate that you can put in without getting penalties so keep that in mind when choosing your range then once you select what you want the ship made out of and the range of the cargo space that you either want to increase or decrease you go ahead and click build when the ship is being built 
it takes days at sea to make. So all you need to do is then go to sea and spend that amount of time at sea. You'll see it in the bottom right hand corner when you're building the ship, how many days at sea it's going to take to build it. Ranging from two days all the way up to 30 days, roughly, I believe. It depends on the ship. Actually, I can look at my sheet that I have here. It's going to take 32 days to build a Venetian Gallius and only two days to build a Barca. So those are your min and maxes there, the number of days at sea. Um, so yeah, you'll build the ship. And then once the ship's built, voila, you build your first ship. Obviously, you can build ships that are outside of your range of what you can use. So what do you do with them? Well, you sell them and try again, because this is how you're going to be spending the first large chunk of your time in shipbuilding is just ranking your shipbuilding by constantly putting in the effort and time to build ships. This is where it gets to be particularly grindy. Um, so you ask yourself, well, what ship should I build then? I want to make this faster. I don't want to do this for hours and hours on end. Well, avoid that. You're going to be doing hours and hours and hours of shipbuilding to get to rank 20 or even rank 16 just doing the basic building of a ship over and over and over again. So getting to R16, just as an example, if you want to do a, do it the fastest way, what ship should you build? You should build a Venetian Gallius. And the reason why is because it's going to cost you the least amount of ships to build, but it's going to cost you the most amount of money to build it. So you're looking at over 715 ships starting from rank one all the way up to rank 16, just to build yourself up to rank 16. It'll take 715 galleuses and over 399 hours to complete and roughly 371 million ducats that you'll lose. So make sure you have that. You're going to be buying the ships, but you're also going to be selling the ships right back and you'll get back some of your money. However, the slowest would probably be the Barca, or actually, no, the slowest would actually be the Turkish galley. Um, I don't know, no, slowest is actually going to be, I'm looking at the chart here, there's all these ships you can build, you can build a Barca, Caravel, Cutter, Schooner, Frigate, um, you know, and a Turkish Galley and many other things, and there's this chart that shows you exactly which ones are going to take the longest, but that one is going to be the, um, the, fast, uh, the fastest, but some people recommend the Frigate because it's kind of like a balance of both worlds, it's going to take a little bit longer, all over 1100 hours or so. But it's going to lose you very little money. You're only going to lose 123 million. You know, so that's up to you. But it's only going to take 410 hours, which is 11 more hours more than the Venetian Gallius. So you choose, you know, for an extra 11 hours of your time, you lose less than 200 million less. So a total choice up to you. So that's why we say, what ships should you build? Build the ships you want to use first. But then after that, you build the ships for grinding anything that you possibly can afford or want to do to get yourself to rank 16 the choice is yours and the last benefit that i could say that's this main part of the guide is going to be refitting your ships once the ship's built you can go to the gentleman standing next to the ship right and you get the option to refit a ship and then refitting the ship allows you to adjust the cargo sails and cannons of any ship you've already built to its minimum and maximum so you can get the right kind of build out that you want a lot of guys in cargo ships want to increase their cargo, reduce their cabin, and reduce their cannons, allowing them to carry more cargo. So, you see how this goes, depending on your use case and what the ship's ranges are, that's what you're going to be doing with your skill in shipbuilding. So that's just the simplest part of shipbuilding. Let's say you ranked it up, you are got the idea, you're building it up a little bit, and you want to start building one of your ships that you can use and making it better. So now we're talking about modifying your ship. Um, that's going to be something that you might want to do to not just one of these ships that you've just built here, but to a ship that you built freely a little bit differently. So we just did basic shipbuilding. The second part is going to be FS shipbuilding. This is like the free shipbuilding side of things where you get to choose what you want to build based off of what hull that you supply. You see that the list that you have is not a comprehensive list when you go to these locations. Locations vary on what you can build building Turkish galleys in the in the Ottoman area, building Vaisos in the Seville area, and building um, galleuses out in Naples. You know, there's all these different options. So you could totally pick and choose those options, but that's not everything. And the way you get access to many more things is by doing FS shipbuilding, where you build it based off of a hull that you get. 
Now, there's a list of all the holes in a uh, website out there, either within the wiki or within the blog spot or within the Ivy Row. You're welcome to look. The holes all give you what types of ships you can build. Small, medium, and large ships, or small, standard, and large or heavy ships. So those ships, those are all based off of what kind of hull you supply. So as an example, I personally like schooners, okay? You need a medium flush uh, type of, it's called medium flush uh, deck in order to build the schooner. It's a duck deck hole that you have. You can buy it, build it, whatever. There's a way to get to it. That when you go to custom shipbuilding, that will, because it's in your inventory, you will then see that option in the list of custom shipbuilds. So there's a list for those things. Pick one out. You can go do ahead and do that based off of what you find. Remember, when you build these FS ships, there's going to be level requirements, by the way. Make sure you don't build something in which that is outside your level requirements. So once you've got the hole, you can pick to choose what you want to build. And once you've built it, then you can do the modification parts. So that's a whole separate thing. Um, so once once you've done a um, hull, then you can get a, a ship that you want. Then you have the ship you need. Then we move on to the modding part. Now you can mod any ship. Ships that you buy from the ship right. Ships that you built from the ship right. Built ships that you build FS ships based of, on the hull that you buy. Once you have a modded, once, once you want to mod it, this is where these parts come into play that you see people selling near the shipyard in your major cities. So the modding ships, if you go to custom shipbuilding and you select a ship that you already own, you get the option to choose one of three things, ship improvements, original ship skill, or optional ship skill. These are considered to be the mods that you can add to a ship. The ships um, can have up to so many improvements, up to so many ship skills, that are optional and not just and only one original ship skill so when you click these you'll see the things available to you that you can then try so let's skip skip improvements and let's go right to original ship um, skills and original ship skills you'll see that you only have a limited number that you can choose and when you select the one that you want and the effect that it's going to give it's going to give you the requirements that you need in order to put it onto your ship you're going to need two or three or whatever the case may be number of these mods they'll tell you which mods you need to put them onto your ship as well as an original ship permit uh, original ship skill permit an osp as they call it um, so once you have one of those and all the items you need you can install a original ship skill onto your ship and then once you click next and say okay it's going to be any number of days to install it on your ship out at sea okay so to make it clear all of this is going to be going out of sea and waiting that amount of days at sea. So this is why this all adds up in time, in addition to your shipbuilding that you're already doing. So next would be the optional ship skills. They have something very similar. You've got to get two items or whatever the case may be to put it onto the ship. Okay. This will require SSIPs. Um, I should know. Let me take that back. It doesn't take SSIPs. You will need those for the next step, but it will take up these items to add these ship skills to your ship. SSIPs are going to be used to add improvements to the ship. So that's the final stage. So just like OSPs and original ship skills and the optional ship skills, they work very similarly. One just requires an original ship skill permit. One does not. The ship perm uh, the SSIPs are used to build improvements to your ship. The improvements would be extra vertical sails, extra hull protection, extra like extra durability, extra armor, extra turn radius, extra wave resistance things of that nature, those are added on based off of what uh, choices you put together on the ship. So you should be doing these in such a way where you kind of stack everything that you can into the slots that are available. Certain slots can only be filled by certain items. So pairing them with the correct items allow you to use um, one ship build amount at sea or whatever the case may be to add all the ship improvements. Just make sure you have enough SSIPs to do so. These cost money, just like OSPs do, so this can get very time-consuming. So, another option for you if you want to try to add improvements. I suggest that you don't add improvements or mods or original ship skills or regular ship skills until you've gotten to the stage of a ship in which that you're absolutely happy with because it's going to be time and money that you cannot get back. So, before you go modding ships, make sure you have the ship at where you want it to be before you go ahead and add these things. 
Um, so the last thing, which is the last major part of shipbuilding, is going to be grading. Um, the, the grading situation is where some people take it extra. Every ship has a grade. If you notice that your ship says grade zero, it's because it's the lowest grade possible for the ship. However, you can improve that grade. Improving the grade gives you many other bonuses, such as durability, sails, uh, armoring, you name it. Similar to that, a lot of the other improvements, but it's done so a little differently. Doing grading, for those of you who want to be more advanced about it, is think of it similarly to fusion, or building ships, putting them together. Um, I tried this method out with a Barca building, and Barca building is a good way to practice it. You build a grade zero Barca, and you build a second grade zero Barca. And then you go to the guy that stands next to the ship, right? And you click his option that allows you to um, do modifications to ships. And then you can choose the two ships you want to fuse together. And you have a certain success rate to fuse the ships together, starting around 30%. There are th certain things that you can do to improve the uh, chances of it being fused, such as doing it at your company um, a shipyard or having the ships be fully maxed out on their um, sailing uh, handling or that little bar on the bottom when you sail a ship that fills up when you have a ship skill that ship skill thing is going to fill up once it's full that increases it there's a lot of other little details that improve your ship um, uh, chances from from fusing together as well as also um, the, the ships being exactly the same you know trading barca with trading barca small ship with small ship don't go doing it with a small ship and a large ship it's not going to work better to do it with things that are the similar ship so um, you, once you have the acceptance that this is going to be a chance of success, you go ahead and click the button and you see if you succeed. This is one of the only things in shipbuilding that doesn't take days at sea. It happens instantly. Should you succeed, you will then have a grade one Barca. If you don't succeed, you will have a grade one, a grade zero Barca with slightly more grading level than before, but it won't be grade one and you'll have only one Barca. One ship is going to be wasted, one ship's going to be kept. The first one that you chose is going to be the one that you keep. The one that you chose second is going to be the material ship, the one that gets wasted. So make sure you choose carefully which ship you want to be the ship that stays around after this fusion is complete. So let's say that you are not successful. Well, how many times do you have to do this? Well, you could keep going until you reach the full capacity of the bar, or you go until you're successful. Chances are you'll be successful in one in three chances right off the bat with a Barca because it's a low level attempt at grading. Um, however, once you get your grade one, you could get it lucky and get it on the one try. Once you have grade one, well, how do you make it a grade two? Well, you need another grade one Barca. So you'd have to do the same thing you just did with two other grade zero Barcas, combine them until you get a grade one and then combine two grade ones and also hope that you get a grade two. It's going to be very, again, time consuming with all the number of barcas that you're going to have to build. Now, those are only level two barcas, but you can see if you were doing this for like a Vaisao, where it takes 30 days or 24 days to build, you're looking at a lot of time invested before it eventually fuses. So, you see a grade six ship out there, you know somebody's really investing a lot of money and time into it because they're building a lot of these extra ships just to be used as material ships to stack them up. So, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing this to a ship in which that you know you want to keep and that you're willing to invest money into. There are items that also increase the chances of this succeeding. And those, again, cost a lot of ducats or even in-game money <laughs> if you want to buy them because that's important to the success rate of building a great ship. Um, so high-ranked ship builders will have more success, I believe, at the rate. So that's why it's important to be a higher ship rank before attempting to do this because you'll have a higher ship rate rating, I believe, um, when you attempt grading. Currently, my own characters, I'm just toying with grading. I don't think grading is something I want to do just yet. Um, I've been toying with the idea to figure out how it works, and I practice with Barkas, and I got a grade one Barka and a second grade one Barka. Now I'm afraid to try the grade two Barka because I know it's going to fail, and I'm going to have to do the whole process all over again. But as long as you do that, you've got a good idea of how grading works. And that's why I say make sure the ship is the right grade that you want before attempting to do all the FS building that you can do to it, like modding it and adding OSBs and adding ship skills, whatever they may be, because those uh, ship skills may not make it through your material building. Um, 
Uh, so it's one of those things that I say, just wait till the very end until you're ready to reach the level where you want to be to add your ship parts. I'm probably going to do this for a grade zero ship and probably be fine with this. I'm not looking to be optimal about how I build my ships. If I wanted a grade six base ship for me to do my own ship building on, I could buy one from somebody for a hundred million or whatever the case may be. There are big trading clippers out there that you can buy for 200 to 300 million from a person who's already graded it to level two and get you started and get yourself a reasonably good, fast, big trading clipper. And then you can do all your modding on it. So be sure that you do that for your own sake, um, uh, you know, so that you're not wasting a lot of time doing something in which that you're not sure is going to be something you use in the long run. So I really hope this information was helpful. I believe I've covered everything. I'm just going to quickly look over my notes to make sure I didn't forget anything about mod modding ships or shipbuilding along the lines. If there are questions you can always ask me in chat, in game, in comments, or leave a like and subscribe here. And then let me know that you have any comments to be made and I will do my best to answer them. Um, but let me just quickly look over my notes here. I discussed as a recap, we said shipbuilding for prerequisites, get yourself a job in which that it bonuses you so that you don't have to do as much shipbuilding and then also do basic shipbuilding as much as possible to get your rank up as high as possible um, and pick a rank that you want to get to so that you can be successful at what you want to do. Get as high as you possibly can by building as many ships as you possibly can. Also refit your cargo and your sails and cannons to what you want them to be for your ships and you can even do it for other people. People usually throw you a tip if you do it for them. Then you got a free ship building. We talked about what you can do with a certain type of hull, whether it's a small, standard, or large hull. There are different varieties that give you different types of ships. Do them for the ship that you want to have. And then, once you have the ship you want to have, before you go modding it or adding item improvements to it or other things, make sure that you decide that you're okay with the grade level that it's at. Because if it is, leave it there. If not, grade it up to the level that you want to grade it up to first, and then you can try adding your um, shipbuilding parts to it so like that would be adding emergency acceleration adding high lookout adding um uh, uh wind resistant mast and wave resistant plating and other things in which that really bounce your ship making it faster or more uh, appropriate for the level of work that you're doing with that ship whether it be cross atlantic sailing or just you know down the mediterranean you pick and then lastly when you're doing these moddings um make sure that you are committed to losing a lot of money because it's going to be very expensive and time consuming to get there. So I believe I've recapped everything. Um, make sure that you have the necessary equipment to complete the work that you're doing for doing modding shipping. That would uh, mod, modding ships that would be like having the SSIPs, the OSPs, and any other items. There's even ways to make it so that you don't have to go out see like an ESBR, an emergency shipbuilding request. That way you don't even have to wait 22 minutes or 32 minutes, whatever the case may be. Again millions of ducats to be wasted just for something that you can invest a little time in. So hopefully this little comprehensive video is better. I'm going to do my best to tag pictures, show content in which that I show these examples going forward for the rest of the video here. Um, and so that if I have missed anything, you just let me know and we'll do our best to address your problem. But this is Chuck Thunder again. Hopefully this video was positive for you and helpful. Please like and subscribe and let me know what you think. Take care.